Hello and welcome to the PM Model Show. Here we are with you live-ish, uh, Wednesday on the 15th of July, 2020. Good afternoon, Mr. Matt, are you okay? I'm very well, thank you, yes, how are you? Yes, it is strange. Uh, slightly different format today because obviously we can't do live streaming at the moment. We're doing this as sort of a recorded. So I'm recorded to camera whilst recording to Matt on here and then I'll edit it afterwards. Not to mention, we've both got loads of deliveries coming in and things like that, so we're bound to get interrupted throughout the entire show. So anyway, good. Is it windy there? Because your camera's on the bounce. Oh, sorry, it's me leaning on me. I feel like I'm reading the news. I said earlier when we were just setting up, I'm not, because I've changed all my setup here again. Yeah. Because it weren't quite working with the other camera and stuff behind, like, where, my, where I'm sitting. Yeah. But yes, I'm actually facing the camera for once because normally even when I'm in my shed, I'm on an angle and it's a bit more, but yeah, it's all a bit. So this table I'm on is very unstable to say the least when we're recording. So I'm going to try, I'll, I'll sit with my hands on my knees so I, I don't touch it, so I don't wobble the cam. Definitely. No, that's it. But the thing is, you always feel like just sticking your arms down anyway. That's the trouble. Yeah, I, it just feels really formal, to be honest. <laughs> just have a bit of paper. Hello, good evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we can speak about yeah. covid19 or brexit that's what they'll yeah, yeah. do absolutely we are the modeling news we are definitely <laughs> anyway um obviously there's lots of things been happening uh, over at pm towers uh lots of new kits that have been coming in uh, various things uh new things have been obviously being uh, released at the moment which again i can't work out if uh hong kong models have just grabbed this one uh, I think it's genius. It is I think quite it's clever. Absolute of marketing them. genius, if I'm honest. It is. So basically, what we're talking about is this, which is the Hong Kong models are releasing the front end of the Lancaster in 132nd scale. Now, as we know, wingnut wings are making a big thing of this one. We all saw it last year at Telford. Uh, it looked absolutely stunning with their front on it. Um, but obviously, now uh, Hong Kong models assuming that no one else is going to release the front end of the wingnut wings kit have decided to jump in very quickly and not get kazumped as they normally do to be honest and have decided to do it as a standalone release and um, they're doing a couple of versions as well of it as well i do believe aren't they i think they are yeah i've seen the one version that's been knocking around on facebook and and you know usual sources and that but um like i just think why not mm. they've already told it Yes. Why not cash in? I think they've obviously kind of struggled to sell their own full kit because yep. one, it's a big, uh, one, it's very expensive. And like, you know, we're going to put it when you've built it. I think the idea is there. Mm -hmm. And really, obviously, with wing nut wings, you know, going, yeah. there's a space. I and have to I say, you know, we spoke about this before because I've often said how unlucky Hong Kong models are. Because let's face mm. it, their first one they brought out as a big, yeah, we're going to release this, was obviously the Mosquito. Only to yeah. find out several weeks later that actually Tamiya are just about to release one, which as we know was absolutely gorgeous. I built that kit and it was absolutely fantastic. So from that point of view, you have to feel for them because they've got all the tool and all the rest of it. Yeah. And it, it got a little bit of a hard time, shall we say, um, uh, during reviews. And I even reviewed it as well. And it is night and day between the Tamiya version and the HK one. And then obviously they decided they're going to be doing a Lancaster, only to find out that Wing That Wings are doing one as well. So it's like, not being funny, you've probably got the two best AAA companies out there for model making kits. And there you are as a manufacturer chipping along to find out that they're releasing them. It's, yeah, it must've been absolutely devastating for them to do it. So from their point of view, I think, well, certainly from my point of view as well, is that the 32nd Lancaster is really big. And as you know, I wall hang all mine anyway. So you could wall hang it and it'd be absolutely lovely. But knowing that you've got the wing nut wings coming out and it's a far, far nicer kit, or was, uh, that, you know, I think a lot of people were like, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold off and I'll wait to see how much the wing nut wings was going to be. And if you were to believe popular press at the time, actually, it wasn't too bad in the great scheme of things. You know, I thought it was going to be over 500 quid. Um, but a lot of people were sort of quoting 300 quid for it, things like that. And then I was seeing prices at 270 and 280 as well. So at that point, you're thinking, well, that's not too bad at all, really. I think I'd hold out and go down the wing nut wings route. So I think what's pure genius of Hong Kong models is they've obviously seen this and thought, screw it. Everybody was saying how they would buy the front end of a Lancaster. They clearly tooled it all and all the rest of it. All we've got to make is a dolly for it to sit on and um, and we can cash in so i have to say it's always good and they always say that you know it comes to those who wait and i think hong kong models have probably got a really nice little bit of a niche market because we all said it all the team when we saw it at um, telford and obviously 
throughout the entire release process and when they were talking about it, it was genius because a lot of people don't want to build a three and a half foot wingspan bomber because one, as Matt was just saying, you've got nowhere to put it. And two, you've just got that thing about where do you store it, you know, for spraying it, holding it even. I've built some really yeah. big stuff recently and just holding it to spray it, it gets, you know, it's, you end up with arms like Popeye. So by just doing the front end, you've actually got the business end of a Lancaster and that's where, you know, as you say, you've got the crew stations in there, you've got the detail. I'm not a fan of that clear stuff that they're obviously doing, but you could just build half of it or cut it open and do the old red line thing like you see in museums to show that interior off. Me and Matt have even said about little lights in there and various things for lighting it, haven't we? And all those type of things. Yeah. So I think generally it was a, you know, a genius movement on wing nut wings because I think a lot of people were being put off just because of the scale. It is really, really big. So now that Hong Kong models have literally got a green light to do what they like, you could still go off and obviously buy the, the entire thing. Or as I said, it's coming down the line now, you've got the actual cockpit section. So good old yeah, Hong Kong models. I'm glad you stuck with it. And it just shows, you know, the actual hair in the tortoise situation you know uh if you just keep going along with it you can outlast people uh, and obviously you've got a situation now where you can actually just release it at your leisure as well so yes good on that. i think it's going to be a good seller for them if i'm honest hmm. like you say wing that wings going there's obviously that market there and they've obviously noted the interest in what the front end on its own hmm. What wing nut wings we're going to release has obviously generated. Yes. Do you know what I mean? If you know any company worth the salt, obviously you've got to keep an eye on competitors and mm -hmm. and what's going off in the world. So it's already told. It's yeah. already there. So really, like I say, design the dolly for it. Mm. You've got your kit. Yeah, absolutely. Stick it in the box. Happy days. I think it'll be a good seller. I really, really do. I, I do think as well. Would, I think it's actually know. it's one of those nice, interesting ideas. And again, for modelers who. Uh, limited on space you've got the fantastic thing of working on a large scale kit without having to build the entire thing but you can just do the business end and in bombers as yeah. we know you've got a lot of glass work at the front as well so you can see all of that detail in them so yeah mm. definitely i think it's actually going to be a really good seller for them and good luck to them on that one it'd be interesting to see how well they do with it and obviously different versions because as we know you've got different ones that don't have nose turrets uh, yeah. You know, you've got the pressurized one as well that they did and all the different ones. So it'd be interesting to see how many different versions of them they do it. And also modelers, and let's face it, you do get guys who are just into like Lancasters. Yeah. You could build an entire squadron of just front ends, different markings, different yeah. nose yeah. art that they had. You've got all yeah. those options as well. So yeah, I think it would be a really nice seller and a, a, a different way to take the hobby as well. I'm surprised. You know, so I'm surprised with as well that they actually don't do that with the B-17. Hmm. Because you think of the nose arts on B-17, yeah. and they've got G out and the F. Mm -hmm. My God, the world's their oyster. Yeah. Because they could just produce the front end, like you say, the business end of the aircraft. Yeah. And have fantastic mm. nose art. You could have lined up, you could have a squadron Absolutely. if you wanted, or yeah. whatever. And they're not going to take up a lot of space, because they're going to be quite, you mm. know, slinky, aren't they, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you ain't got the wings stuck on there. I, I, I think it could be, especially for the bigger bombers, a bit of a thing you know you're you've obviously got like the um hobby boss b24 yeah another one yeah again fantastic nose arts on them um the invaders coming out in 30 second as well yeah there's definitely a market just for that absolutely I think, yeah. the full kit. I think you know as we've said before you've got that interest that we've often you know as sellers as well the cockpit sections those old esky kits they yes. sell really well. The 1 16th yes. scale cockpit of the old, um, you know, block 10, is it, I think, or 15, um, yeah. you know, um, F-16s. Yes, 104. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And yeah, you said you've got the, the 104 one as well and the stuff like that. And again, it's just absolutely fantastic to be doing something different in a bigger scale. And again, I think with bombers, as you say, really, you think they've really done the B-25, so they could just do a no section on that. That'd be a nice, cheap, yeah. relatively good yeah. kit. As you say, yeah. they've already done the B-17 in 30 second, so it wouldn't yeah. take much to upgrade make small dollies for them and just do a market like that and we often speak about obviously the japanese market and stuff like that how they like the smaller compact kits because they don't take yeah. up as much room and i think from a modeler's point of view we often say about it i'm getting old now i need to move up through the scales you know <laughs> yeah. you've got that thing where you're still working yeah. with something big but you know you've got no room to take it up and obviously from a cost point of view i don't know how much it's going to cost no one knows at the moment i don't think they've released a price have they just no, not yet, yet, no, it's all just literally just come out into it. the press. So, I mean, we've been, uh, I've had a few emails asking about, are we going to do it on pre-order and stuff, mm -hmm. which, yeah, we, we will, will because yeah. 
it would be silly not to from mm. a business point of view. Yeah. Um, but as in cost and stuff, that will come at a later date. Hopefully, this ain't going to be a long sort of drawn out thing with them. No, I think, you no, know, that's right. If they get on the ball with it and mm-hmm. get it released, perhaps beginning of next year, I think perhaps pushing it to be sort of the back end of this year. But yeah, cash in. Absolutely. Cashing on it for, yeah. for that company, then they can hopefully then move on and develop other things off it. Do you know mm. what I mean? So, but again, I think it'd be a nice thing they can test it, see how the market takes that one, and then I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if you didn't see the B17 doing it, and then obviously the the B25. The mozzie is a little bit difficult because obviously the cockpit section falls into the wing spar and moving that way back, yeah. so it's not naturally ahead. You know, where you could yeah. literally just say chop it shove it but i assume as well that obviously with some of the kits often as we see like the b17 you have the front end is it on sort of interchangeable and stuff like that so it gives you the different versions of front ends they could do anyway like the b25 you can do it as the striker you know the strafing nose yeah. onto it or the bomb one and obviously with the b17 the different versions of them same with the lancasters as well so again if, if they wanted to go down that route or other companies you might find that if this sold well i would imagine there's a few other companies out there might decide Side that let's just do those because that's basic we've seen some like that massive great peacemaker yeah the 36 isn't it uh that thing yeah. is massive but again that would make a nice cockpit section got plenty of glass on the top and on the yeah. front and all things B-52, like that b52s b29s you know and stuff like that yeah. super fortresses and that they all lend yeah. themselves fantastic so you might end up i think if they do well with it all of a sudden it'll be that thing companies will be throwing out other ones because they've got the tooling for it just upgrading yeah. adding to it as well as new tooling stuff and it could be a new way of doing it because that's basically it'll take out the same room as like a 112 scale bike yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. you've even yeah. got little you know display cases for them as well yeah. you know so yeah. i think i think it's probably we often talk about how there's nothing new in the hobby and i honestly when the wing that wings did that we were saying that's actually quite a nice little device for that for them to do it and i can imagine it sort of becoming a, a quite a flurry of interest with manufacturers keeping an eye and seeing how it's going and then obviously if sales are doing well and people are selling out all the time i can imagine other companies thinking we've got the tool in you know we we've got the kit there we could just upgrade and do it a, a similar thing and it's not going to be too much money uh as in you know scratch building an entire new kit for it well that's it like i say it's going to be decal options isn't it because let's be honest you look at a b17 or a b24 or like i say a b25 or whatever and it's the nose art isn't mm. it let's yeah. be honest you're drawn to sort of the decal scheme of that aircraft yes but normally you know you you're going to showcase sort of the nose art mm-hmm. off whatever aircraft it is you're building and i just think that's brilliant mm. he's just like if it like I say if you're interested in a few different sorts of schemes you then not think limited for space if you've, you ain't got to build the old kit yeah you could just buy the front end and like well i like that nose art and i like that one and you can just display those and i think that's just mm. there is a market there it, why we Zucamori, they, they did the engines as well didn't they was it Zucamori did the engines who did the engine those 112 engines so you could get like the merlin Perhaps it wasn't Zakamori, it's some other one. Was it? HK did HK, it. HK was it? Something like that. H- but they H- were quite H- nice as well because you had a standalone yeah. th- item. So you could do the engine and, like you know, the ones they used to take around to the shows had, like, fantastic spinners done on them. Yeah. So although it wasn't just the engine, you had the prop with the nice spinner and they had, like, very nice spirals on them and everything else like that. So you can imagine just plugging them in. But they were on their own stand and it was a model on its own. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. Right, so we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll like, see how that one on. pans out. But I think that was the most exciting news, really, this week uh, that was uh, brought out about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, in other news, from our point of view, the Meng Warrior is out. Yes. And we have them here, or we've got some, and we've got the rest being delivered later this afternoon. Coming by personal so, courier. By personal courier, literally. <laughs> but anyway, they'll, that'll be here. Um, and I have to say, it does actually look a nice bit of kit. Yeah. So, um, I had to have, have a sneaky peek in the box, and obviously, Mr. Molyneux's all over it like yeah. a rash. He must have sat in the back of a warrior a few times in his army career. Yes. So, when um, he was a youth. Yes, his youth. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they're, they're in. That's been released. Um, also, back in as well from Meng is the Husker. Yeah. We've got them back in stock because they just went really dry. It seemed to have got released, and mm-hmm. then we couldn't get one for love and the money. So, that's back in as well, so that's good news. And a, and a few of the things that Meng sort of, you've been able to get hold of, like the um, the World War One tank, the male version. Yeah. Uh, that's back out, So which is another nice kit, isn't it? That's the one with the full interior and everything. So, 
yeah, again, I think things are starting to trickle back through, yes. slowly but surely. Good, so, good, good. Uh, and if anybody's wondering why I keep looking at it, I've got my little list of You've actually planned this notes. course. So I'm not just winging it. Well, the thing is, memory. every time we finish a show, it's like I forgot to talk about such and such, and I didn't mention yeah. that, I didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah, so I've literally got my pad here with some notes on so we can actually got something to talk about. Uh, and the other thing that's been delivered today is the Millennium Falcons. Yes. Because there was a bit of a delay I think he and Gary getting them, to be honest, from Tiger. So, you know, after he'd rung me. So I think he got them on Monday or whatever, and they're, they're being delivered today, uh, oh. along with the B-Wings as well. The B-Wings are going to be in. Very nice. So that's good. So, good, so good, anybody good. who's obviously pre-ordered off the off the Flory site for the Warriors and the Millennium Falcons will be getting a invoice soon. Just while I'm on, it might not be this week. So yeah, I was saying I'll go. I'm away on holiday from Friday to Monday. So any invoices, whether we get them out tomorrow or later today, obviously I think because of the Millennium Falcons are definitely going back course, they've got to be booked in. So somebody's obviously got to be here for them to be picked up. So that's definitely going to roll into next week. Um, and also with the uh, the Warriors, if I can get some gone before I go away, I will. And then if not, it'll roll over and they'll go out Tuesday. Yes. So happy days for everybody. I was going to and say, also, exciting stuff. In, it is. And also, talking of pre-orders, the F4E will be up on the Flory, PM bit of the Flory site for pre-order. I've now got a number, a picture and a price. So I'll get Andy when he's got a minute. We'll get that one up as well. So, that's so this another. is the Zuccamori. Yep, F4E. Very good. So cool. yeah, I think that'd be nice. I, can see you I might have one to build one of those, yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't built an Echo for... Yeah, the long nose phantoms for yeah. cool. What you say? Many a moon, shall we say? I did a load of them, and I put up the photos. They've all got tiger mouths on all of mine, so it probably yeah. end up with another tiger mouth. But yeah, they are very, very nice. Got to have shark's yeah. mouth and tiger mouth on them. So I think that that's going to be like a nice, a nice kit as well, isn't it? Because I say I think the only other one we've discussed is Asagawa's older kit. Now that's that's getting a bit yeah, as we were saying, you know, you got the Asagawa kit, kit, but really to do that one justice, uh, like the cockpit's a little bit basic. I'll go down the color photo etch set with it or resin Aries one into it, yeah. and again nozzles as well because the nozzles are a bit. So putting the nozzles into it, but you say the Zukamori one now. So I've taken the, the the mantle. I think as often we yes. talk about how kits you know, get left behind. But it's amazing, really, when you think, because that F4E kit is a 90s kit. Um, yeah. And uh, it stood the time now for basically 30 years. It yeah. has been the go-to kit, and it shows yeah, your yeah. age when you look back and you think, 30 years? Cracky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it has, and it's only really been superseded now after all this time, after 30 years, that kit, and it's literally been superseded now by the Zuccamori one, which is obviously a little bit more tasty. And we often say how the um, uh, Academy phantoms as well mm. you know as yeah. I say but they don't do the long nose version so no, it's an overlooked version isn't it i think you it know, is the... and yeah the thing is with it you think with the long nose version from uh, an exporty point of view to other yeah. nations you know obviously the japanese one they have the long nose yeah. ones uh, and then obviously you've got your greek your german yeah. your Israel. turkish israeli ones you know there's yeah. a, and then obviously there's lots and lots of you know users been around the world with them and they have just nobody seems to bother with a kit and it's like you yeah. know it's always jays and things like that you know seems to take yeah. it and it's really from an exporty point of view and all the other nations that have flown them because actually i quite fancy i might do it as a turkish one because yeah. they have like a, a war um um with the tusks on them as well uh, and they yes. do very that nice what I call it hill scheme. I don't think it as technically is the hill scheme, but it's the greys, and then they have the black faces on them and all the rest of yep. it with the teeth yeah, and yeah. tusks. And I think they look really nice on there. They look pretty mean on that, and it'd be nice to do because I haven't actually don't think I've ever built a Turkish Air Force plane no. ever. I, I didn't know if he was going for like the a, a, a hammered Greek version. I was going to say if you're into your Greek weathering weathered. and you want to hammer the hell out of it, yeah, everyone does the Greek ones, isn't it? But they look absolutely yeah. stunning. But again, it's nice to have that one in now because it, you know, as you say, the Zuccamori ones are beautiful gets right the way through. So yeah. um, it's nice to have the Phantom family back in stock. Well, yeah, like so hopefully they'll bring the F out as well because mm. obviously being a part of the Luftwaffe SIG and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, the schemes that the Germans came up with for them, there's some just absolutely some. Oh yeah, stunts. absolutely. 
yeah. a brilliant scheme. So I think me and I'll talk to you about like what's the difference between an E and an F, and you said there's not a lot. I don't it's think, not a lot. It? It's just the slatted tailplanes, isn't it? I think is the main thing and stuff like that. Really, um, yeah. as you say, you, it would be very easy to switch out by using other kits and even a little bit of aftermarket. So, but yeah, it's a slatted tailplane, isn't it, with the between the E and the Fs um, mm. and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, leading edge slaps and flats and things they have on the E, but yes. Very, very nice. But again, a very much sought after kit that we've been after for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, so, well yes. overdue for an upgrade, obviously. Hmm. Um, also, which is you've built this, uh, again, it's just been, I think, just obviously what's been going off in the world short of supply, but the Hobby Boss A10 we've got back in as well. Very There's a few nice. other Hobby Boss kits, but the A10, I've seen that was in stock, I thought, right, you know, yeah. the best one in scale, it's 48 by a country mile in it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got that back in. Uh, also, we have got some new tools in. As, as long as a, a bit of a restock of scrapers. Yeah, which if you didn't see yesterday's show, which apparently, oh. I must admit, I have a confession. I, I did. Put, I watched it. Oh, I put it in the wrong area. I did put you? it in the video build <laughs> area instead of in the vlog area. It was on the main site, but for members, I had a couple of people message me. Thank you, guys, because I didn't see it. <laughs> so they were like you right. do realize it's in the video builds and not in the blog section uh but yes yeah, so i was using scrapers yesterday so it's like a 20 minute video on me showing how to do it so poor old buster who's still here from it got hammered yesterday so yeah he got proper scraped to death uh round on it so we did a bit of a demo but showing different ones and different ways of doing it and stuff like that but i have to say this this was the first time i used it with buster uh yeah. and this tool here is absolutely great because you can literally freehand carve so yeah well i've watching you actually strip paint back to plastic yeah oh, I, I was it was actually quite, can you actually finish the job because it's actually quite relaxing to watch oh is it then, <laughs> so i put some nice ambient music it? behind and i'll just give yeah. the entire buster back to plastic <laughs> yeah i'm surprised you've not had requests for you, for you to carry on and just be a plastic kit <laughs> but it is actually really clean as well i mean i like scraping anyway i've got quite into it like you have and yeah. um it's it's such a useful thing for less mess shall we say, and yes. then obviously just finish off with a sanding stick and you're good to go. But actually, I was really impressed how much that just stripped the layers back. Yeah, you it go was, back one at a time with it. Because I think and, that was what I was trying to show. I think a lot of people think scrape cleaning is very heavy, that you yeah. literally, you go and you're just down to plastic and you're like going through all your detail, but you're not. Yeah. Again, usual thing, like I always say with this, let the tool do the work. So when you're scraping with it, don't push yeah. down, just let the weight of it. And to be honest, these have a really nice weight to them anyway, yes. uh, that you yeah. can. And as I was showing, you go through one layer, then the next, and then you think Buster, if you say, he's like a tree. You can count yeah. the, the yearly rings on him now because he's literally he's got something like about 12 coats to, to 15 coats of paint on him. So when we were doing it, you can just go through and then it's down to a black layer, then a grey layer, then a green and a yellow. And we're literally going right the way through with them like it. But it did show that, you know, you do have a lot of control with them. Don't think these are like very much, you know, a hammer type tool, which you're just going to obliterate because you're not. You're just being very light. And again, little things like I showed on that back area in here where that glue mark that yeah. you can actually just very nicely take that off uh, and that would be the same if you were dealing with raised detail and you want to take raised detail off you can just use a scraper and get it nice and flat that you know sometimes when you get in there with sanding sticks you're making damage and you can't quite get in the corners either yet with these you can get right in there so again i think it's quite handy having a few different ones but i can see this becoming my favorite one especially because of the price because how much are these these aren't expensive are they i think that are they 13 quid i think yeah. something like that and it's just hope at all it's going to last you a lifetime it's a, a one and done you know yeah. you, you're only going to yeah, need yeah. one i don't imagine it's not one of those it's just going to give up after a amount of time or, and you're going to break it because again it's a tough nice tool but it's one of those as well that feels very very tactile in the hand and i think that helps because when you're dealing with other scrapers and i've got them in there they're sharp mm -hmm. on the corners and holding them's difficult so but this yeah. because it's just a you know a blade and this is the twin one they do another one which has got a single side this is the twin side it's more like a, a spear um, yes. but it's just really really nice for getting in and you can you can just place them in as we've shown onto it you know i'll link the video down below on this one so people can watch it if you've missed it but it is it just shows how much control you can have with it and how easy it is to clean up and again mess free it is you just do that and you're good to go whereas before you need a wet cloth and you're covered and you're you know you're like <laughs> you look like you've got a cocaine yeah. habit you know you're like pa go into the door yeah. you cover this not it's sprue dust <laughs> honest uh, so yeah it, it's definitely one of those ones where 
you know, when you start to get used to it and you start using it, it becomes one of your go-to tools. And that's why they live here. I have my sort of go-to tools here and it is, it's gonna live here, this tool, because it is, it's one of those, oh, got a slight line there. You've got a, a bit of a step. You can just, you know, come in there, scrape it out and away you go. And it's just a two minute cleanup job as well. Instead of, you know, as you say, running through sanders, destroying detail and stuff like that. It's, so. Yeah. It is, yeah. You just end up kind of obliterating stuff when you don't need to. It's like I say, I use them for rescribing like plastic figures. I've said before because you mm. can get in the shop and detail up. Because obviously yeah. the limits of injection molding, they, they can be a bit soft, mm -hmm. and you can really make them. You know, if you take your time and rescribe them, yes, uh, make them look r really not far off resin. I mean, mm. I don't think you're ever going to reach that quality of resin for sharpness, but you can get a very very good sort of finish on them. Yes. Um, and very simple because, like I say, they're so sharp and so precise. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of control of what you're doing, and they very rarely slip, to be honest, as well, once mm -hmm. you're doing it. So you've obviously got the pointy end that you yeah. can get in and do collars and undercuts and stuff. Um, like I say, the ends is just it's your own imagination, usual thing, in it, for, yeah. for what you can probably use one for. But they really do complement the sanding sticks to, you know, yeah. like I say, if you've got a step, just scrape it sort of level then just finish it off with the sanding stick you're good to go where before like I say you just wear a standing stick to you know a coarse one yeah obliterating every detail Absolutely, so you've got a lot yeah. of describing to do when you don't really need to so and also the nice yeah. thing with these is uh, I know a lot of people will say but you can just use a blade which is true of course you can yeah. but you can't get into tight areas with a blade and especially because yeah. these got the little curve on there you can put it right where you want it to be precisely in there where trying to get in with a flat blade you're always going to be dealing with the highest point because you can't yeah. flatten it out but with these you can literally just come in at any angles from how you want to go and just remove that little bit material but actually the thing is when i was doing the actual video for it um i was you know one of those things i was thinking of if you were doing a cockpit and you know those things ed Ard sets it says remove detail that's where you'd go now you yeah. know the days of scrape cleaning and sanding and stuff like that yeah, with a yeah. blade and that i just literally these would be a two second job to just to whip through uh, and you wouldn't need to do any more really clean up after it as well but generally like down in here when i did this section here you know it's quite a nasty glue mark we were testing a glue or something and i did wonder yeah. how it would work because obviously glue's technically always softer than the plastic uh, mm. and it, it was actually fantastic but also it's a clean it's not steppy it's not yes. jaggedy finish and you know you need to sand that now so it's not like you're almost make you know you're fixing one problem but creating another which is yes. sometimes what you can end up doing you know you fixed it but now i've got to fix all the damage i've caused with it so but that's actually really really nice so it's again a couple of swipes with a you know a finishing sander uh, and it's done whereas before as i say you'd have to go in there i think through various grits of paper you know and also you probably make more damage away from it but at least with this as i say same thing you can just come in from an angle and do it but if you're doing it with a blade and you try and go in on it you're actually going to be just scratching at it instead of yeah. moving away and that's the nice thing with those curved ones like that so yes definitely those it, I mean, just a useful tool to have in your arsenal i think it, it? Uh, uh, you know yeah you know, we often talk about what do you need and you know as you say disposable knife as i always do is my orange scissors and one yeah. of them now uh, and yeah. a good pair of tweezers and i'll be good to go you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would literally refine my sort of building work and stuff but again i think really for the price point because you can pay a lot of money for these things but as you say for 13 quid it's one of those that will be in your box forever you know it's not going to be something that's going to break later on down the line it's a lot more substantial than even you know my other favorite one which is this one the display one is great but i am acutely aware that it's a precision tool and it wouldn't take a lot to snap the end off would it matt no, it wouldn't. No, because no, they no, do I, do that. I'm, yes, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. I have so testament to that. <laughs> I must admit, I, I can vouch for that one. That's a nice piece of kit and at the right price, really. It is. It is. Um, so what we've had in as well, obviously, we've had a, a few restocks of the scrapers, all the different versions, and I'm actually going to order some more in as well because I think from last night's show, mm -hmm. the waiting list has gone up, shall we say, oh, right, for the... Okay. Um, for the one you've got, the straight one. Yeah. So I'll get some more and it's no problem. You know, they, they should be here next week. So and there's some other stuff coming actually from from said company as well who we deal with. Yeah. Tool wise as well. So what's this space? But what I did get in as well out of the order was a set of, well, a few sets of them, which yes. are the single sided master tool hippers. Yeah. Now, I've got no idea what they're like. 
to be honest, because we've never had them, we've never tried them. But again, for the price point, it's a good starting set of snips, I think. Yes. You know, because otherwise you're going down the display route or even the Godzan route. Now yeah. you're getting really expensive, aren't you? Um, but I think for availability as well, these mm -hmm. are going to be pretty readily available, easy to get hold of. So we'll have to do a bit of an on test and see what they're like. But I think they come under like 20 quid, yeah. to be honest. I think they're about 18 quid for the mm -hmm. set. Uh, which I don't think is bad, really, for a set of snips. Like I say, it does say on there, up to up to three mil plastic. Yeah. So I pick new, hey, I pick my new glasses up tomorrow. I can't oh, wait. I might be able to see what I'm actually reading. <laughs> and, um, and only for plastic. So yeah, don't cut in wires and yeah, you know electric work with them. But it'll be it'll be worth trying. Like I say, I think what I'll do is I'll chuck in. Yeah. When I send you a warrior down, and I've got yeah. a few. Oh, I tell you what else is coming as well. For you. Oh, right. Yes. Cool. Yes. There you go. Very nice. So when you do your yeah. next build, you've got the paint set. So I've got a bit of a care package coming to you. Cool. And, and I'm expecting one in return. Or yes. have you forgotten? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing that we've got in is that. Oh. Which is... Which is very nice similar to that. It's, it's very similar, but a lot cheaper. Yeah. So, again, we'll, we'll get them in. I know, because obviously there's been a lot of criticism, shall we say, about the price of this type of stuff. Um, yeah. So what we've done is we've, we're trying to look for more affordable options. But it and does come with all the, the parts. And the, the nice thick shanked ones as well. Yes. The thick thick shanked one, should I say. Yeah. So, so yeah, apart from, and I think that's under 20 quid, I think. Yeah. I'll say They're on the site. I've put them up. Um, again, it just... It's going to do what it says, really, and it's a bit. It's going to drill hole at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, it will. It will drill hole. So mm. that's what you want. But again, it's it's an affordable pin vice. So, yes. um, and also available again is um, the little photo etch bending tools. Yes. You can't get the large one. No, but the medium baby one. The small one. Yes. So Matt's on a different camera. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on that camera. Matt's on this camera. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they do two flavors of this one, though, don't they, Matt? Can you see that one? Yes, I can. Yeah, there. That's is that the small one? Is this that, is like, the, the small one, but they do two flavors of the small one as well, now. You do the, oh right. Well, we've got the medium and the small, and then they do the large one. Oh right, uh, that is a medium one. This is the baby one, the little square oh, exactly. one. It, right. Okay. Yeah. But again, they're, they're available because they've been available for ages. Also, what's back in as well, which I'm going to list, is for the armor model, is this is, but the Zimmerit tool. Oh, right. Yeah. I've got one. And that, again, that's like really was really, well, readily available. And then obviously, Drawing it's up, just dry. production, mint it and stuff, yeah. and just delays and that. So they're back in as well. Uh, and there's a few other things I can't remember. You know, that's the one thing I didn't write down on my little pad, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, if you go in the tool section on PM, we're starting. We've got a Tamiya order coming in as well with some uh, restocks of tools from them. Yeah. Um, oh, I tell you what, it will be back in as well from the Trumpeter range. The Scribers. Yes. yes. And the Little Saw. Mm hmm. Because they've been out for ages as well. So they, they'll be back in stock as well. Um, hopefully either tomorrow or at least sometime next week. So it's slowly, slowly dri dribbling back through. So. I was going to say, things are coming back to normal, thank goodness. Um, as yeah. I say, we had a lot of trouble with, obviously, the suppliers haven't got it. Um, I was talking to one of my suppliers this week about something I deal with a lot, and they were saying the problem they've got is that you've got a chain, there's a supply chain, and somewhere in the chain, someone doesn't know. So you can't mm. give a definitive answer of when it's going to be in. Uh, yeah. And that could just be a transport link, it might be a manufacturing link, it might be a packaging link, maybe a printing link. Well, somewhere in that chain, someone doesn't know. And the thing is, then you've just got that knock-on effect to everybody. So nobody knows. And like, yeah. you know, I've got, is like, as soon as we've got it, we can get it to you within 14 days. And you're like, brilliant. When are you going to get it? Don't know. So it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. so when you've got it, I know I'm 14 days away. So it's not a problem. We can do that one. Um, but there it is. But now, luckily, things are starting to filter through and, and coming through. It's just like, for me, the, my weirdest one at the moment is wadded caps. 
It's not the, yeah, cap. It's not the cap, it's the wadding that makes them watertight with the washes and yeah. stuff like that. As stupid as it yeah. sounds, it's like the size of a 5p disc of, it's a specialist cardboard, but it slightly swells when it gets water onto it, which then seals yeah. the seal. Uh, and yeah. it's like, yeah, there's a shortage for them, because you know why? They're all being used for hand sanitizers and for gels, and because it's the same yeah. type of system. So it's yeah. just that, you know, they haven't got them manufactured in the size I need for the caps for our stuff. So it's yeah. like, we can do your caps and we can do your childproof ones and we can do this one and this one, but the one I want can't do it because of the middle one. But luckily we've got quite good stocks of them that hopefully see us through. But uh, yeah, and again, it's just one of those stupid in the supply chain of all the different things and now you're waiting on a paper disc. It's like, who knew? But there you go. Well, I say it's something you don't think about though, isn't it? That's the thing, you yeah. know, um, just one sort of breakdown in the in the chain. Yeah. And everything's on hold, isn't it? Like Absolutely. you say, it's, yeah. it just it, it is what it is. So well, I think we've dealt with it pretty well, to be honest. I think, yeah, that was the whole point. <laughs> you know? Again, you know, it's like for people asking as well, the starter sets and the main yeah. Flory model sets and obviously the skinny sets. The trouble is one of the sanders that is used in there, uh, to be honest with you, one of the grit sizes we're waiting on uh, to come in. It's due in on the 27th. Uh, as soon as it's in, we will have a manufacturer run done for us immediately um, and that will be fine and it'll be in. So hopefully the week after it'll be in stock and we're good to go and we'll have full rolls of it. But we've got everything else, but actually one side of a sander, which is actually, I've got one here. Oh, have I not got, I can go here, it's that one. So it's that grit, because obviously they're dual grit. It's that sanding sheet there. And again, we could option uh, to change it for another grit but it won't be the right grit and I'm a bit of a thing for it. So they said, but it's not that much different. It is. So we're literally, all it is, this is the one that goes into the three pack, which goes into the starter set. It goes into the big set and obviously for the skinny versions of it well, and we're just waiting on that one and it's due in, but that's the problem. You're just waiting on one tiny link, as we were saying, yeah. and that's it. Everything else got tons yeah. of it's fine, but there you go. I think I think that's been the same all the way through, hasn't it, really? You know, like if, if one of the links breaks in the chain and then obviously it all goes to pop, there's a delay, yeah. you know, and that's just a knock-on effect for everybody, isn't it? So, like, so I know um, talking about the Tammy delivery, I think they last week they've had two more containers come in, so fingers, fingers crossed it could be white paint. Hmm, that'd be nice, <laughs> white and black. Of all white, black paint and some of the and some of the silvers off the LP range because yeah again they've been really it's like really odd color well not odd colors I suppose really common colors but they're the ones that have been sort of hard to get hold of really hmm. um, so we'll see what turns up on the order because they've been out like say last time we, we were on I think they're all on back order there's a load of them on back order so it's what turns up in it it's, it's you know it's a lottery yes yes <laughs> what, definitely. So, and talking of other deliveries, we've had another AK delivery came in yesterday. Yes. Actually, that got delivered, which is the oil paints again. Unfortunately, no Starship fill for no smoke. We must have either cleared them out or somebody else has cleared them out. But we've got the aircraft weathering sets in. We've got a load of them in now because they seem really popular and a lot more of the more common colours. So we can keep the stocks. Yes. You know, the plan is to keep the stocks up. And primers, we've got white primer and grey primers in. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them. Uh, what else came in as well? burnishing fluid um just just general stuff on the site that you know we're going to sell a lot of yeah so unfortunately like i say if, if they ain't got it we can't have it as in and and the mass sets have sold out you know with the mass sets as mm -hmm. well yeah as soon as they're in we'll get them back in but i think they've been more popular than uh, they probably believed mm -hmm. whether everybody's run off after you showing them last week or whatever yeah. so like i say they're on back order and it could be a supply thing for them, I don't know, because it was a newish product, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. like I say, it's, it's one of them. We'll just um, just play it by ear once it's back. We'll have them in. Well, as I say, we've been trying to obviously replenish stocks as much as we can. We've been yeah. doubling up on orders and everything to keep it in. But it is unprecedented times at the moment. Everyone's been doing the hobby, which is nice. And in, from my point of view, it's we've had a lot of new members on the Flory Model site because uh, they've come back to the hobby because they've had a bit of time on their hand because they've been furloughed. Yeah. So we've had yeah, people yeah. coming back in and, you know, obviously you get a lot of people asking, what do I need to start with? And, you know, so it, it, it sort of stripped everything out and all the rest of it. So again, I'm just hoping from a hobby point of view, this will continue that you'll get, obviously a lot of the people come back to the hobby and have, you know, bought a kit, giving it a whirl and seeing what works and what doesn't and got into it. But we've had a lot of people buy in, you know, obviously tools and kits and stuff like that. who have never built a kit in 30 years. 
in 40 years yeah. in some cases in 50 years and they're coming back into it and you know finding the delights of a hobby which is nice as well so although a horrible thing with the entire covid crisis full stop and nightmare yeah. for everyone in some ways hopefully a little bit of good might come to the hobby from a selfish point of view that we might get a few more returnees coming into the hobby perhaps people have never done it before either we've had a few of those that have never even built a kit uh, yeah. that have joined as well and, and and things like that so hopefully it all you know gets the hobby going moving forward so forth and so on well that's it, isn't it yeah it's nice to be picking people up as well obviously it's not the ideal circumstances to be doing it no, but no. it's not the way you know, want to do it but yeah no, it's not 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 by a long way but you know if it, if it does benefit the hobby then hmm. and benefits them as well really Absolutely. if they find a, something they enjoy doing and like doing and you know fair play brilliant stuff it's um, good for everybody really hmm. so I think my little list I'm about yeah I'm I'm about out on my little list are you done on your little list I'm done on my little list yeah hmm. well my little list is is little but yeah from <laughs> deliveries that's coming in to be honest <laughs> that I know of like I say yeah we've discussed it so um I mean is there anything else we no I think we're, we're probably all right for today then as I say, a yeah. uh, little bit unfortunate all this because obviously I've got a computer. So <laughs> it is being built though, everyone. It's being done. Well, I've told them what to do. It's going to cost a fortune, but hopefully it'll future proof us for another. If it lasts eight years like it did before, I'll be very yeah. happy. I did say to them, if you want to take it out in the back and burn it, that's fine. Just send me a video because the members yeah. will want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were saying there's nothing wrong with the case and the power unit's fine. The rest of it, yeah. <laughs> so but yes mind you like i say it's been hammered hasn't it really the amount uh, of yeah it's, uh, it's on as i said before like i said on the friday show and that it's on basically first thing in the morning which is usually about seven o'clock and it goes yeah. off when i go to bed uh yeah. and apart from that it's running and streaming for hours on which is, we know is very hard on it like with just yeah. me and matt on here the system down here is running at 92 percent yeah. <laughs> stressful on so it is stressful on the old gear but the old one used to come up saying temperature warnings and stuff like that and cpu yeah. usage and all the time when we used to do and we used to do as you say 10 hour live streams you yes. know it, it's a yeah. lot of work on the poor thing bless it so uh, yeah. but yeah generally i think streaming is the hardest thing it does when it's recording it's not so bad but streaming it's absolutely killing it uh but yeah. uh, hopefully that will be back with us next week and we'll be good to go if not i'll bring the other computer in and we use that one for the minute uh but at the moment we're sort yeah. of fudging it on this little one to make our way through cool but yes so anyway if that's it for today that'll do us very very nicely don't forget and i'll pop the links up because somebody did say last week's show where because uh, I forgot to put actually the PM Store link on, but I, as soon as this is edited, I'll put a link down at the bottom now as well uh, that you can go. But I will put it in the show notes as well for everything we've spoken about today, so you can go off and grab this scrapers and stuff. I'll do the video link to this one from yesterday yeah. as well, so you can check out the scraper video if you haven't seen and see Buster getting obliterated. Everyone was saying in the forum, poor old Buster, he's been attacked. Yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart, he's all right. He'll be fine. He'll be fine as he goes through. He might get a coat of primer and go again. Which well, you will. I said, I'd, you know, I'd say you ought to just do a scraping video. Of a scraping video. Like, Scrape, nice. clean the entire thing. Yeah. God, can you imagine how long that'll take? It'll take, um, take forever cheapest. on that one. Mind you, it's probably be, it'll be cheaper than the amount of IPA it'll take to strip that. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so, um, just in a word on the scrapers, I've got a feeling they're going to go out again really, really fast. Yes. So like I said, don't stress about it. I'm going to order some more in again. Yeah. Because um, to be honest, I did order more in than I've got. So I think what's happened is they've obviously sold out. At thing I've got a certain allocation, mm -hmm. but then I've looked on today to be honest because I was looking for something else, and they must be back in stock. But then another company that we deal with has also had a restock. Yeah. So I think it, it's been around. You know what I mean? The the, the stocks have come back in. Yeah. So I reorder some more in. So don't stress if you ain't got one or will be sold out because. I think probably we will, to yeah. be honest, yeah. pretty quick. Um, and we should have some more in for next week. So when we do the show next week, then... Yeah, we'll all be good up. We'll let you know again. The scrapers are back in. They're we'll in again. Up. You'll be good to go. <laughs> we'll get, yeah, we'll, we'll get some decent numbers in as well. So. Yes. But, and shameless plug again. Don't forget, for members, this is members only, uh, the Floor and Models site, obviously the buffers are back in. 
the wall. And there's about 70 odd packs of them still available. So they will stay as that for the next week or two. And then obviously yeah. whatever's left goes out to the general public. So uh, yeah. if you want to get them, get them now. I know lots of you probably have by now because I put it up last Thursday uh, and a lot of you have got them over the weekend. They've all gone, they're all on their way. But if you do want to get them, they are back in stock. So we sort of do those as a limited runs and whatever's left will go out to the actual uh, general public probably the end of next week. So yes. Oh, just what I was going to ask you before we finish. Hmm. Reviews. Yes. Um, uh, I presume not quite that's all yet. out the window, isn't it? Because you've got a computer. Well, yeah, it's a little bit difficult, but I can do it. I can record to the cards and then do it that way yeah. instead of it going to a computer. So, yes, I do. What would you like to see first then, Matt? What should I review first? Do you know what? I'll I can't remember tomorrow. What, you, what you got. Well, <laughs> I can't um, remember what you've got. Yeah, in one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, we've got the top-notch stuff, which I will do. I might actually get that done this afternoon. Uh, we've got that fantastic book as well, which I will yep. sort out and get that one done. We've got that gorgeous 70-second uh, uh, scale Hornet, yeah, okay. which does yep. look very nice, nice indeed. We've got yep. Porsche. So oh yeah, do yeah, do yeah, do a Porsche. Got a Porsche, and then we've got um, the uh, Skymaster. Yeah, that's definitely worth a. That's really good. And we've got the, the Sycamore. Do you know what? I'm looking forward to the review on that. What the Sycamore? I am actually. It's yeah, a, it's a bit just for some it? for us for stocking um, that company because we don't stock it. Yeah. And just to, just to just to see what it's like to be honest, I think it's a quite an interesting subject, the Sycamore. And that is, do you know what? This is a. Um, that was in a film. You know how we're doing the group, you know, the yeah. movie group build? It's in a film with Anthony Hopkins called When Eight Bells Toll. Oh, right. But okay. It's an Alistair McLean book, apparently, and it's a film from the early 70s that was in, and it's some sort of adventure spy action thing. Right. And there's one of them in it. So, Ooh, very good. There you go. Something. Tedious link. We'll do that, yes. <laughs> Range Rover. Yeah, that's, yeah. Got one of them. We got the Valletta. Which sounds yes. like a motorbike, really, but you know. It does, uh, yeah, it should, yeah. A uh, couple of old ones, but as I say, can't get these anymore, but I'll review it anyway, unless you've yeah, found that... somewhere else. <laughs> well, not the mini, I yeah. think that's been and gone, unfortunately. Been and, gone, that one. and of course, I've got the uh, DN uh, TC yes. Mirage 2000, 30 seconds scale. Very well, nice. Big old box, then, big... isn't it? It's huge. I tell you, yeah, they're nice boxes though. Fingers crossed, actually, that we're going to get some Kitty York stuff sooner or sooner or later. It would be nice, cause... wouldn't it? I must admit, I am looking forward to seeing their SU25 and seeing exactly what that's like. Because we haven't seen one of them for I... ever, have we? That's the thing. And I don't Fingers fancy crossed. making capo ones anymore because they're truly awful. Really, they're proper no. showing their age, but you know, Very it old. still turns out all right. Bless it. So I tell you, yeah, but. Yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully, we will be getting some Kitty Hawk stuff back in. So, um, like yes. I say, it is what it is, isn't it? It is. So. We can only do what we do. I'll tell you what I'll probably be doing this week. Actually, I might run through the reviews because, as I say, it's a bit tricky doing the filming for the other stuff. As I say, yep. this little lady's literally just waiting for paint now. So, she's all primed and is done. Um, yep. So, she's just waiting for paint. And then we'll be good to go on that one so we'll get that one into paint and then moving forward the b17 to be honest i can't bring it over because it's too far out of the way and it's buried uh but she's over there she's completed so the b17 is all done now so that's nice so sorry it's on uh, we'd be coming up probably at the end of the week if i can get the editing done for it so oh, oh, uh hey do you get turrets on all right yes they did actually the weird thing is i'm not too sure about the bottom one because it's in right. there but you wouldn't want to fly with it Okay. It's sort of Fair it's enough. like a bayonet system. It goes up and then it twists. Yeah. But if you pull on it, it just comes out. But it's enough to hold it in there. I don't even understand how it sort of goes in. But it's supposed to have like a bayonet system. But I don't yeah, think yeah. the lugs are big enough. And I don't I'm think not. if you make them bigger, it won't go in. So yeah. it goes in and it's like magic. It's sort of in there and you're like can't work out quite how. Um, yeah. Realistically, what you should do is stick a magnet on it. Because if you put, yeah. if I thought about it up inside, because it's got a part that goes up to the roof inside, you should just put a magnet on it. Would have been the easiest way to do it. But hindsight's a wonderful thing. I didn't think of that at the time. But it does go in there. It does hold. It doesn't fall out, and you can manoeuvre it, which is quite nice. Because the top turret's fully poseable as well, so you can manoeuvre it. So is the chin turret and the bottom. Yeah. So you can manoeuvre them round if you wanted to. So okay. it does work. But anyway, she's all done now and finished, which I must admit is actually very, very nice. She looks great. The weird thing is, is it in here? Try and photograph it. Cause I gave it a well yesterday. You can't see any weathering on it at all because the camera just bleaches because of the silver. But if yeah. you do it with no studio lights on here, it looks lovely. You can 
could actually see it then, and it, it looked yeah. quite nice. But uh, it's only a light weathering job on it, but it's mainly for the superchargers on the bottom, a little bit over the wings and things like that. Yeah. But, you know, generally she is supposed to be somewhat clean. So, But very happy Starship. how that came out. Hey, Starship feels? Uh, it is, and a little bit of smoke. Okay. Yeah. So we have, the two we haven't got, clearly, is what I've little used, little I know. So, I'll tell you what uh, is a nice colour, actually. I used it because I was just practising um, on one of the kits, what was up here on the, uh, my old kits, Bitumen. All right. Is a proper good colour. Right. Not an engine oil, or two good oils. Mm. They're, they're actually probably worth having in your uh, arsenal of oil paints, as, as along with the other standard ones, like yeah. I say, smoke, and if you can get it, Starship Filth and Blood. But yeah. talking of Starship Filth, actually, on the reorder that came in on the AK stuff, obviously we've got the aircraft sets in. I've got quite a few of the sci-fi sets in as well. Yeah. So we're pretty much stocked up, I think, on, on all the sets. So, so the sci-fi one, has that got Starship Filth in it? Because yes. obviously the aircraft set has got smoke in it. Yes. So if so you want you to go. get them, you can get them in the sets. So if you haven't got any, I'll buy a set anyway, because you've got all the colours you need in there. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, just just to say, if anybody is starting down the oil route, then mm -hmm. we have got the sets in stock and quite a few, actually. We've got a good good, uh, good run of them. Good so. Run of, cool. Very good. So, yeah. I think that's about it, mate, to him. Very good, then. We'll leave it there, then. Okie dokie. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon at this uh, live recorded thing, which is a bit weird and random. I've got to edit this together in a minute. That'll be fun. We'll be seamless. <laughs> yeah, it'll be one. seamless. It'll be lip sync all over the place. <laughs> it'll be a <laughs> yeah. ten minutes. And over show. to my collie. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. The logos would be round the wrong way and everything, it'd be fine. Like with his wobbly camera. Like. Yeah, that's it, with the wobbly camera. Actually, I've got a thing on the edited, it stabilises. So you might not, you might be pinned sharp and you'll be level because your tables are doing this. By the time I finish with you, you'll be like that. Ah. Do you know what? I'm looking at the camera and it's sort of pointing over the shoulder. Yeah, you're fine. It's fine. Instead of, instead of pointing, people <laughs> will be moving out. Oh, that probably is. There you go. Yeah. It is what it is, like it I say. Is. The power of editing will it sort the power of editing, it'd be seamless, this. By the time <laughs> I've got you in a new background and everything, it'd be fine. Yeah. You'd be at an airport. Yeah, yeah. We've got Maui. a clean wall here. <laughs> <laughs> the PM logo, just like... Yeah, that's it, absolutely. I was watching some report this morning and it had some American congresswoman and she was sat there and it looked like she was obviously in a, a boardroom. I Did you see that. it? And it was flickering screwed. over her shoulder, yeah. yeah <laughs> she was clearly screwed. at home and she was using the fake background bit because it kept on putting her chair, wouldn't it? And I thought, yeah. she's never in there. She's sat at home, probably got a kitchen behind her or something. <laughs> yeah, it was. I seen that as well. It was brilliant. Never mind. Oh. That'll be us. Anyway, we'll call it quits then, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget, you get everything at pmmodelsuk.com. That's pmmodelsuk.com, which will probably be under here hopefully uh, if not obviously the links will be down below uh, on the show notes as well and you catch all of the stuff and everything we've spoken about today so till later everybody happy modeling take care bye bye